Welcome to Pocus Geek. In this video, we're going to go over a pregnancy case. We've already done one in which we found an early pregnancy with just a yolk sac. This one, we're going to see the next stage that should develop and what you might find if you're doing point of care ultrasound. So I wanted to review the scan sequence. I didn't do this in the last video, but wanted to remind you of how we go about getting this. There's also some videos that I've created on this. Um, and for this particular video, um, we're just going to go over the transabdominal. We don't need to do a transvaginal in this patient in the end. And we'll discuss the reason why here towards the end. So what I like to do when I start this is I like to focus and make sure I know what the anatomy is. And so what we're going to do here is we first want to identify the bladder. And so I'm going to color this. Here's our bladder here. And I place the probe just uh, superior to the pubic bone with the probe marker towards the head and find the bladder. And then you're going to look for this vaginal stripe right through here. And then we find our uterus. And I like my first very first image to be of this uterus with the endometrial stripe. A lot of people say it looks like an upside down pear if you look like this. You can see that. Um, this is the first image I like to capture. After I've done that, I like to fan through. I fan towards the patient's right, fan through the uterus once, making sure I focus on the fundus, and then I come back and I scan back towards the right. That allows me just to watch the anatomy, so what's going on, and then I start to document by taking images. And so then the next image we're going to get is we're going to go to a transverse view. And I like to go up towards the fundus and turn my probe marker towards the patient's right so that you'll see this. And I like to start at the fundus and I go all the way to the top and then I fan down towards the pelvis or down towards the pubic bone until the uterus disappears. And then I come back up and then again, I'm going to do it one more time and then save my images and document my findings. After I've done that, I like to look at the right adnex at first, and so I angle my probe over towards the patient's right, and you can see right here uh, the patient's uh, pelvic brim is coming through there, and then the uterus over towards the middle, or the medial side on that right side of your screen. And I look in that area for any adnexal masses, if I can see the ovaries, I just want to make sure we don't miss anything there. Then, with the probe marker still towards the patient's right, I like to angle over towards the left, and I like to do this at the level of the fundus, and once again, you can see the pelvic brim right there. And I like to check out the adnex again, looking for any masses that might be present. Now, if there's a pregnancy visible in the uterus, then I like to go evaluate that. And that can either be done on a short or long axis, or both, whichever you like. If there isn't, though, and you see a tubal ring or other pathology, you should evaluate it at this time. Initially, you just want to get an idea of what the anatomy looks like, and that's why we go through this scan sequence. So we're going to start with this patient, and you'll see how I walk through these images. These will all mostly be still images with a few videos to show you what's going on. So here again, it's not, uh, you know, this is a real patient, so it's not as always as ideal as we'd like, but what we see here is we've got bladder. You can see the thicker wall out in here, and then we do see the vaginal stripe right here, and the uterus is a little bit hazy, but it's right here, like this. And so that's the first image I like to capture. And we do see a possible gestational sac, and we'll figure that out as we go. But this is what I see initially. And then, like I said, I'm going to fan to the right, fan through the uterus, come back, fanning to the right. And then I'm going to document this time capturing, making sure I knew uh, all the anatomy and making sure I capture. So what we're going to see is a little sliver of the uterus right here. This is the right side of the uterus. And we'll see that get bigger as we come. It's back more close to the midline. And then we even see a better view of the uterus there as we're fanning to the left. And then we'll see that that uterus disappears. So I usually take about five or six images because I like still images. I think it helps people to focus on what they need to capture. If I didn't see the cervix at this point, I'm going to angle down and get the cervix. On this one, we did see the cervix. There was no masses down in it. And then we're going to rotate the probe towards the patient's right. And we're going to see here that the uterus is right in the middle. And it comes like this on this view. And then we're going to fan. It gets bigger. We come through. There's that possible gestational sac that we see coming into view right here. Again, the uterus is like this. And this is our short access probe marker towards the patient's right. And then we're going to get down towards the cervix, which is right in here, and it's going to disappear. And then we're going to angle over towards the patient's right side. So what we see here, so we're going to go back up to the level of the fundus, 
and we're going to see uterus here like this and then this uh, it's always hard to tell if it's the ovaries on a transabdominal but what we have is a couple things we have a vessel here and your ovary is typically going to lay medial to that so this is the patient's right side and this is the patient's left so we're looking at the right so this way is medial and what we're going to see is right here is where we expect our ovary to be or we're going to be looking for any adnexal masses in that area we're going to fan through this a little bit so we go the ovary disappears we bring it back in and then it disappears again again we see the uterus right here Here's our likely gestational sac, some stuff inside the gestational sac. Here's the vessels over here. Then we're going to go over towards the left. Now what we're going to see in this one is in this video, uh, we're going to see that we can't tell the relationship of the ovary to the uterus here. And so we're going to do a video and show that that ovary initially seen right here at the beginning. Let me bring it back here. Is right here that's our ovary and as we fan then we're gonna see the fundus come into view so let me go back there and play it so we can see that ovary and then we fan down and we can see its relationship to the fundus so it's actually superior to it with the way we're fanning because as we fan interior we see more of the uterus so we go back, we look, that's a pretty normal looking ovary. A lot of people describe it as a chocolate chip cookie. You can see here um, on the outside that this is your cookie. And you can see a few little chocolate chips, or these are follicular cysts in here. And that's a pretty normal appearing ovary, especially for a transabdominal. And don't get frustrated, a lot of times you won't see the ovaries via a transabdominal. Sometimes that's due to obesity, due to gas, or just they're not visible, they're pretty small. So we're going to look through that. We look through the left adnexa. Still nothing there. Still nothing. No adnexal masses. Now we're going to come back and we're going to focus on this uterus. And what I want you to pay attention to here is that what we have is our uterus again. So we're following our scan sequence. So we have our uterus here. And then we have this likely gestational sac right here. Well, then what we also see is these two little black dots, and you also see it layers and is isoechoic um, to, the, to the uterus a little bit. And this is a subchorionic hemorrhage, and you'll see some layering, and that's going to be more obvious in the next video we have here. So we start with that. Here's our subchorionic hemorrhage. Here's a little clot. And then this over here is our likely gestational sac. And what we want to watch for is a yolk sac and or an embryo or a fetus there and to determine if this is a definitive IUP. And so we see that video playing. We can see right here towards the end. I'll show you right here. We can see some things within the uterus and this is going to be what we're going to focus on and we're going to zoom in and we get an image like this. So what we do see now is that this is defi a definitive gestational sac. Here's one decidual reaction. The other one's not as obvious, but it's right in here. And right here we have a yolk sac. So by definition, this is a definitive IUP with a yolk sac present. And then we go to the next clip. And uh, unfortunately, I only have it with calipers on, but right here is a fetus. Just going to write, lay right next to the yolk sac. And you want to make sure when you make this measurement that you don't do it with the uh, yolk sac in place. Here's our, our complete gestational sac. You can see the decidual reaction out here. And then we can get a fetal heart rate. Um, a lot of people do this with Doppler. There's some recommendations uh, via emergency ultrasound um, leaders that say to do it with M mode. And so what we do is these each of these lines in M mode correlate with um, different parts of the image that we see. So this super bright line up here correlates right there. And as we come down, we can see that right about here is where we see these little tick marks. 
and you'll see they come in pairs and that's the fetal cardiac activity and so we can measure that and we place the bars there use our machine to calculate that and up here we see a heart rate so what do we end up with so on this transabdominal ultrasound we end up with a live IUP at six weeks and one day with a fetal heart rate of 120 and a subchorionic hematoma at the very beginning I said we'd come back and discuss why we didn't need a transvaginal so I'm going to do that briefly so when we have a confirmed IUP via transabdominal and we're able to get a fetal heart rate, we really don't need a transvaginal ultrasound. Most of the time, our clinical question, and our, as we go back to binary questions is, is there a intrauterine pregnancy or is it a definitive intrauterine pregnancy? And here we can say there is. And so I don't proceed typically with transvaginal ultrasound unless there is an abnormality that I see that I can't define well via transabdominal, or if I can't document a fetus with a heart rate, then I go on to transvaginal because the follow-up's a little bit different. This patient, for example, has a live IUP with that heart rate of 121. Their follow-up is really not mandatory in the next day or two. If they're stable and they're doing well, they can follow up anytime within the first trimester. If we go back to the last case, they needed follow-up in a week to see if they had a missed abortion. This case, however, has a living fetus and not, only needs standard follow-up at this point. I hope you found this video helpful for use of POCUS in first trimester pregnancy and early pregnancy. This is a pretty typical finding you'll, you will come across if you're using this study. If you have any questions about this or other ultrasound related questions, feel free to reach out to me at pocusgeek at gmail.com or comment below. You can also follow me on Twitter where I repost and post ultrasound education at Pocus Geek. Thanks for watching and have a great day.